What's up everyone, uh, thanks for taking an interest in this guide. If you're watching this video, then like me, you enjoy Rocket Arena, you like Top Notch, and you want to step your game up or learn something new, right? Don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. Uh, this guide is going to be for, for beginners, to, uh, for, or for beginners to talk, you know, advanced players. I'm just going over things like artifact setups that I prefer to run, uh, Top Notch's playstyle, how I use them, and how I think you know, other people could use them too. This skill overview and this, this optimal use of the character in general. Um, a little bit of brief matchup discussion, and a little bit on game modes too. But other than that, let's, uh, let's hop right into it. His, uh, his primary fire is called Bouncing Beauty. It's essentially a rocket grenade launcher, which I personally immediately thought was like, oh, that, that's sick. I mean, that, that caught my eye. I grew up on arena shooters, so that, that was right up my alley. Um, you're able to hold down the primary fire and detonate it on its release, making it pretty versatile. And I'll show you guys examples of it later. But yeah, you can just shoot it out there. Like oh now that explodes. No. Something like that. Next up is his Zephyr Strike, which uh, is also known as Big Ass Missile. You'll know, hear people screaming about it in the games. There's really not much to this skill. You know, um, I will admit it's a bit brain dead too. All you have to do is lock on, and down comes the Hellfire. Now I like to save this skill for when players have already used their dodge or they're a little over 50% damage, but you can uh, you can have fun with this one. You know, um, you can play super aggressive with it. You can always call it down when you know the cooldown is up. So, oh my God, again, get him down there and get some damage. Um, you can save it for easy kills on players that are like one shot or two shot. This guy would be one shot right now. You know, one shot, he's dead. Mega blast. Um, you can combine it with primary his primary bouncing beauty to do like a devastating two-hit combo when they're probably a little above uh, 65 70 percent and not many people can really survive it especially if they don't have a dodge down and I'm gonna show you guys an example of that too later on so uh, I'm not gonna do it now but it's, it's pretty cool the last up for his skills is artillery's balloon now this skill is pretty insane because it just happens no one in the cast can really cancel this or prevent it from happening. I say cancel, I mean like Blast Beater has his special and he, you know, he explodes and stop people from doing things, certain people. Um, you can, however, you know, air strafe it. I don't think you can really ground, you know, to strafe on the ground and dodge it. It's you're, Unless you're moving pretty fast or I have the speed boost here, like you could probably ground strafe it, but I would prefer, if, you know, a just group of people that are trying to hit others with it, keep it in line. You can air dodge it easier than you can uh, ground dodge it, so maybe save it for that. But um, th this special is going to come down a little to the left of your crosshair in a straight line wherever you aim it. So he's coming right at me here, I can aim right over here, and he's going to get hit by it. Now, you can use this at the start of matches in smaller maps to inflict like instant pain on people, combined with Zephyr Strike, and you'll you'll have people wondering like, well, what the fuck just happened, and <laughs> cursing you out. Maybe even coming into your stream and you know just just genuinely hating you because you're doing that to them, and it doesn't require much talent. I press the button, I lock on, but there's there's more to talk about, you know. Well, and we'll get into that. A few things to keep in mind, though. All right, I guess some tips. Um, the, the hitboxes in Rocket Arena are, in general are pretty generous, um, especially when it comes to splash damage. Your shots don't even have to be directed, so for all those players that don't have the best aim out there, uh, guess what? Probably gonna be your new main. <laughs> you know? So um, a, a tip for beginners is, and you know, speaking on like you know, not being able to aim too well or having trouble aiming, you don't have to hit them directly. You know, hitting directly will work, but uh, when you're firing at an op opponent, Imagine three points. I'm gonna show you two points here, but I mean if he was I can show you three. Above his head, the arms, and at the feet are right, three points we're talking about. If you aim at his little icon here, you're not gonna have the icon in game, but if it was like a health bar, you shoot and you detonate over his head. I mean you're gonna hit him. You don't have to hit him dead on. Same thing with you know, we coming at me for oh slow down, buddy. Like you're gonna melee me. Uh you hit him to the side like that. You know? You don't have to hit him direct, you know, right on the same way you have to do it for M4 or Kai, and that's why people say, you know, he doesn't take skill, but there is a bit of skill you know, involved in aiming where you, you know, where you want to shoot. And you can shoot at his feet too, if he was in the air, I would shoot below him and it would, it would pop him up. But uh, that's just generally to keep in mind to help you to aim, so I mean, if you're having trouble trying to shoot at people, imagine like a little silhouette around them. And just kind of aim, aim at that for now, but you'll still have to 
shoot and detonate in time, you know? Um, Top Notch's crosshair has an indicator on it when your grenade is being primed for explosion. Now, it doesn't really help too much when you're, I mean, because you're going to be looking where you're shooting, of course, but if you turn around and shoot, you know, you can just know when it's going to detonate. More importantly, when you shoot and you hold down the uh, primary button, you're going to see this. You know, this is the the rocket grenade that we are going to come to love, and I'll show you some awesome clips of how that can be really, uh, really used in-game to counter some people or just, you know, set up traps and whatnot. And last but not least, this, uh, keep this in mind guys, if you're firing in the air, the rockets will not, uh, the rocket grenades will not explode. That's going forever. It's not going to explode, alright? This is important because if they do explode when they hit, you know, they make contact with the ground. And when they make contact with anything, they're going to explode. If they don't make contact with anything, they will not explode. So when you're down here, if you're ever in a situation where you're down here and you're trying to fight somebody, and you're there in the air and you're just, you know, you're just shooting at them wondering, oh, I can't, I can't hit them. Well, remember, you got to detonate your grenade because they're not going to explode. There's, not, there's nothing to make contact with. Which is why he's such a, a, a crazy, uh, a crazy problem when he's up in the sky like that, you know, shooting down and making contact with everything aside from having, not, not having to detonate your grenades by themselves, you can just kind of shoot them down and it's, it's an old school grenade launcher. During uh, my, my grind to level 100 with Top Notch, I didn't actually spend too much time looking into artifact setups actually. Um, I, I like overlooked them, I didn't think they would play a big role, but that was early and then I fell in love with the game and I just kept grinding. But uh, man, was I wrong. Those things are awesome, and let's look at some artifact setups, or the, the artifacts I run with Top Notch, at least. Um, I enjoy running one of two builds. It depends on who I'm playing with, from solo or from squad. But um, the yellow build, aka my, you know, the speed build, is pretty popular now, and it's cool. You know, seeing a lot of people, you know, use this. But um, I use uh, Jaqua in the first slot because uh, when you're playing against good players in Rocket Arena, they're they're gonna focus you. You know, Top Notch is a, is a threat. He's, he's he can't just be left alone like that. There's no question about it. You're hated. Like, you have to. You have to die. You get, people are going to be focusing you. Japwa helps me escape these situations a, a little bit easier. Um, that's why I like it. Uh, combined with all the, the other ones, um, boost cap, boost capacitor. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory here. Top Notch wants to be in the air. He wants to be free. Let my man fly. Oh, th this artifact really lets you do that. It's. It's a game changer. I can't really say much more about it aside from like try it out, <laughs> even try it out on Rev, and you, you like you'll never want to go back. Um, Juping Jukebox. Uh, this and Boost Cap kind of go hand in hand, in my opinion. Um, especially for characters that are gonna be airborne, and that's that's top notch, you know, uh, more than on the ground. It's a it's a staple for this build, but I mean it can be interchangeable. The um other build I play is the blue or CDR build, cooldown reduction, if you don't know. Um, and I run Reef Buoy for the first one because it's just like Jaqua. Uh, we're going to be getting focused a lot, so you know, Reef will allow you to just spam your special a lot more often, keep the pressure on your opponents, keep people off you. When you're able to escape, you know, you can, you can just, you know, kind of keep pummeling people. But uh, it's it's good to kind of always have your special up or more, more often on any character, you know, in general. Um, Super Cav. Top Notch is a, uh, it's a monster in the right hands, man. And so is this artifact. Like, try this out in a, in a knockout game and try to go for last hits, too. You'll be somebody's worst nightmare. I, I, like, I, I guarantee it. Like, they're going to be flipping out when you are constantly just hitting them with missiles after missiles after missiles. And last is uh, Crystal Crown. I use this just because it just makes the most sense when combined with everything else. Um, using your special ability reduces your active spec secondary cooldown, and taking damage reduces your active special ability cooldown. So you're gonna be, you know, again, just like this, raining that missiles on people over and over as long as you're doing damage, getting KOs, or even taking damage. So I mean, this this is an awesome item. A lot of people use it. I think a lot of people will agree it's 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 an amazing uh, artifact to have. I chose to uh, pass on these red ones or the damage artifacts when using Top Notch because he naturally racks up easy damage already as it is, um, especially if you can hit your primaries combined with all your other automatic kind of skills. And I think it's just overkill at that point when compared to the other artifacts you could use. I don't think it's bad at all, um, but I have more fun running 
this yellow or this blue build right here. And um, of course, this is all this is all preference. You know, at the end of the day, um, you can you know play play what you want to have fun. But uh, enough with talking about this. You know, let me let me show you guys what's really up with Top Notch. Top Notch consistently puts us some of the most damage in the game, and quite easily that uh, we've learned so far. So. Let me show you guys what it looks like when you optimize all the things we've learned and I'm about to show you and hopefully I can help you improve your top notch game. So remember when I said there were advantages and disadvantages to being in the air too long? Well in this clip it's a pretty good example of that. Um, I'm, I'm in the air for about a good 45 seconds or so just trying to annoy the team. I'm, I'm fighting this Jado and he's really going through it right now. He's bouncing off the wall, um, he's hovering above him and he's trying to get away. He, finally realizes where I am, but by the time he's already mega blasted. Yeah, it's just a quick finish. You can use this object right here that I'm hovering behind to just kind of like line of sight your opponents and use it as like a focal point of like, oh, I'm getting kind of weak, I'm going to go sit and try to regen or recharge my jetpack, giving your team some kind of cover. But eventually, you know, you're going to get shot down. Shot down by a Jada who is probably just sick of your shit. This is a good example of uh, what I was just talking about, using the map to line of sight your opponents and using the splash damage here to finish off this M4 and knowing that you only need to shoot near them is, is major and it allows you to kind of like peek and shoot safely behind something. As promised guys, here's that two hit combo I was talking about. Devastating on a weak opponent and uh, it's hard to see coming if timed right. The trick to that is making sure that you get the Zephyr missile locked on first then you shoot your primary and detonate it for the hit stun into the rocket. And it's a nice little one-two combo. Be confident in your ability, guys, to absolutely take somebody from zero to Mega Blast, if you have the jump on them, that is. Um, this top notch is up on this ledge, he's a little too close to the edge of the arena, and I mean, when you see things like that, you want to capitalize on them. Players that might be poorly uh, positioned, because you, you can really bully people out of the arena with top notch whether it's spiking or skyboxing, and, and we'll get into that, I got plenty of clips for you. Now, if you see this Boon, he's uh, he's flying it dangerously far out of bounds, and um, I, I can't pass up a free kill, I don't know about you, so what do we do about this? We're going to swoop on in, give him a little two-piece in the biscuit, and uh, send him on his way. Capitalize on bad positioning, this applies with every character. I'm pretty sure anyone who's played Rocket Arena at least once or twice has experienced this. This is what you and only you can do in the game. Yeah, Rev is fast and Plink can get over there at the start of the match, but just look at how much of a presence Top Notch has just at the start of the game. Use tactics like this if you want to make the enemy team hate you even more. Here's a real quick example of uh, capitalizing on a dodge that was already used. And I'll get more into this when I talk about some matchups. But always remember when you're fighting and playing the game, everybody has the same dodge cooldown. And once it's used, they're a fair game for the next 6 seconds. Sometimes it's just best to wait it out. Another example of uh, how having the high ground in the right area at the right time is a game changer. But I'll say it again for the people in the back. Capitalize on bad positioning. I wasn't even concerned with Plank until he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now I told you I would have examples for you guys. Be creative and have fun with this character. Before we move on, I feel like I should give you guys a quick tip to look for uh, in, in the heat of battle. When somebody's tumbling like this, chances are they don't have their dodge up, or maybe they're uh, they're new and they don't realize they can dodge and they can stop this. Either way, capitalize on it. Let's start off with a mirror match breakdown of 1v1 top notch. So it's a quick match. We've been going at it for a bit here and nobody was bothering us too much and it's fun to 1v1 in a 3v3 game. But this is where you need to tap into your prediction timing and really outplay the other top notch. And uh, just, just make the better call when to detonate that grenade in the air. 
Moving on to Amphora, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. She's uh, she's she's a tough character to take down, but she does have a weakness. When Amphora pops out of her Stingray special, she's shot upwards into the air, and like you can use her momentum against her to secure an easy kill, provided they don't have a dodge available. But as we just saw, that Amphora just made a really good play. She dodged that rocket as she's off again. So when you're trying to kill players like this, forcing them upwards and out of the arena is called skyboxing. It's uh, it's, it's really good, it's really fun. And practice this when you're fighting against M4s so who are giving you a problem. I promise you the results are worth it. Beard or Fat Beard, uh, as my friends call him, is a huge target. A huge, dangerous target if you get too close. So, what we're going to try to do always is uh, when we're fighting one, is just simply keep our distance. Aside from that, Blast Beard players will use their Shockwave special defensively to try and prevent those last hit KOs. So, if you recognize this pattern, simply wait it out and then take a shot. I didn't want to spend too much time on matchups, you know, specifically in this guide, and I, and I plan to do a matchup video later down the road. But uh, here, here's some gameplay of Top Notch versus Rev, Flux, and Kai. So versus Revs, it's already hard enough to hit them typically because they are going so fast. And what I try to do is, and also um, I think back to the beginning of the video when I talked about that imaginary silhouette, or in the three points, the head, arm, feet, head, arms, and feet. Um, I try to get the splash damage on them and get them to a point where I can combo them with the primary and then the lock on missile. I think uh, like the two hit combo. Now it's not 100% effective all the time, but it's a starting point if you you know you have a hard time dealing with them at all. They're, they're hard to hit. Uh, Flux though, Flux is the newest hero of the cast, and although I love her design and her character, she has one major flaw. Now you can see here I'm, I'm not really on it, but I. I, I I catch the flux going into her flux first, and when she goes into this special, you can just follow her, just follow the trail, it makes her really easy to target and track down, and if you want the kill, you can go for it. Kai, Akai, Akai. Uh, everyone's kryptonite, right? Like her bubble it like really renders you useless, and she pops it, it slows down projectiles, buffs her damage, can't really get through it without a, uh, a blast beard to help you, right? but I never said her bubble stops projectiles from exploding. So what you want to do, or what you want to try to do is, you know, you can use your cooldowns on her, it's gonna get slowed down and it won't get through, but your bouncing beauty, your primary, is a real beauty in these moments. So try to use tactics like this against Kai's, combined with even the bomb you get from the item boxes to force them out. And if they want to stay in, well, take a look. Getting around to the end of this whole thing now, and before I leave you guys, I just want to touch on what game modes I think Top Notch excels in and doesn't. So uh, here's some gameplay of uh, the modes Mega Rocket and Treasure Hunt. Now I feel that Top uh, Top Notch has a place in every game mode, except for Rocket Ball. I mean that, that's just my opinion. Um, I think there are much better better picks for him than uh, than using him in, in, in that mode. But right now let's just focus on Mega Rocket and Treasure Hunt. So uh, Top Notch offers so much consistent damage in Mega Rocket and it can help push players off the point easily, he can keep pressure on newly spawned players trying to make their way there. In my opinion, he's best used as like a slayer here, you know, really keeping the enemy team down so it's like a 3v2 or a 3v1 situation like constantly. I definitely don't think he should be played on the point at all unless the enemy team is like recently KO'd. Here's a, a clip of what that looks like and why I feel that way. So in Treasure Hunt though, you can play the game really lame or really aggressive. Uh, here's an example of just like laming it out with Top Notch in Treasure Hunt.
these tactics can be applied to knockout as well. I mean, if you're trying to like regen and hide from players, people that are gunning for you, you know, you can use this to uh, escape and, and do all that. But be careful because it's not a guaranteed escape. And uh, like a really skilled player will come and get you, no problem, out there. But for now, let's really dig in and put the hurt on them. And I'll show you some aggressive top notch play in, uh, in Treasure Hunt. And that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this guide, uh, guys and girls. Now, if you enjoyed the guide, if you thought it was helpful at all, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It'll really help me out. I'm just getting started in all this. And if you didn't, then hey, leave a comment below. Let me know about it. I mean, it's my first guide. I, I want to improve the quality for anyone willing to watch. But overall, you know, thanks for watching and welcome to the Top Notch Army.